Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here to talk to you about parallel and perpendicular lines and the equations of those lines. When we talk about parallel lines, that means that the lines are running next to each other. They may be close together, they may be far apart, but they never get closer or farther away from one another. They run the exact same direction, in other words, they slope the exact same amount. So they have the same slope. So parallel lines means that our lines have the same slopes. So when we're asked to find the equation of some line, we may, instead of being given two points, we may just say it's parallel to some other line. Let's take a look at some examples. So here we want to find the equation of the line through this point, 6, negative 2, and we want it to be parallel to the line y equals negative 1 half x plus 5. So parallel to this line means it has the same slope as this line. So same slope as y equals negative 1 half x plus 5 means that we want to use the slope that this one has, so we're going to be using a slope of negative 1 half. Now, we won't be using this plus 5. This plus 5 is the y-intercept for this line, but all we care about is that our line we're trying to find is parallel to this line. It shouldn't have the same y-intercept, but it should have the same slope. So we'll use our m equals negative 1 half, we have a point that it goes through. We have an x1 of 6, and we have a y1 of negative 2. And if you watched our previous video on using the point-slope equation to find the equation of a line, if you have a point and a slope, then you can use the point-slope equation, which we've got down for you here in the bottom right corner. Let's go ahead and use this with the information that we have. So we start with y minus y1 on the left side. So in this case, that will be y minus negative 2 is equal to m, which is our negative one-half that we borrowed from the other equation, times the quantity x minus x1. So x minus x1 will be x minus 6 in this case. Let's go ahead and change our minus negative 2 to plus 2. So we have y plus 2 on the left. And then let's distribute our negative half. So we'll have negative half times x. And then if you think of this minus 6 as negative 6 over 1, first of all, negative times negative will give us plus. And we'll have 1 times 6 on the top will be 6, and 2 times 1 on the bottom will be 2. We can clean this up, right? 6 divided by 2 is actually a whole number, so let's do that. So we'll say y plus 2 is equal to negative 1 half x plus 3 when we do 6 divided by 2. Okay, last step to solve for y will be to subtract 2 on both sides to get rid of this plus 2 that's with y. So if we go ahead and do that to both sides, I'll actually write what I have over here. So we'll get y equals negative 1 half x, and then 3 minus 2 will give us plus 1. So in this instance, notice this line has still has a slope of negative 1 half, right? But going through this 6 comma negative 2, it doesn't have a y-intercept of positive 5, it actually has a y-intercept of positive 1. So we get the same slope, but we get a different y-intercept. Let's take a look at another one. Here we want to find the equation of the line through negative 3 comma 1. It's parallel to this equation here. The thing about this equation is it's not actually in y equals mx plus b form, right? We need to figure out what is the slope of 3x minus 2y equals 6. It's a line. But because it's not in y equals mx plus b form, we can't really see the slope just by looking at it. So what we need to do is convert this 3x minus 2y equals 6 into y equals mx plus b, and then we'll be able to see our slope right here where m is. So let's go ahead and do that first. So 3x minus 2y equals 6. To solve for y, we'll go ahead and get the x term on the other side, so we'll subtract 3x. And that will give us negative 2y only, left on the left side. Then we'll get negative 3x plus 6. And we'll need to get rid of the multiply by negative 2, so the opposite is divide by negative 2. Divide everything by negative 2. So we'll end up with y equals negative divided by a negative will give us a positive 3 halves, x. And then 6 divided by negative 2 would be negative 3. The part that we care about from this line though is remember we want parallel to this line so parallel to this means we only care about using the slope right so we're going to use a slope of three halves but we want it to go through this point right so we're going to use this x1 y1 we're going to use a slope of positive three halves and we'll use our point slope equation to do it so let's go ahead and do that so y minus y1 will be y minus 1 
equal to m, which is our three halves we got from the other line, same slope, same as that, times x minus x1. So that would be x minus the negative three that we have for our x1. Let's go ahead and write this as plus three. So it will be y minus one equals three halves times the quantity x plus three. And the next thing I think we want to do is distribute our three halves. If it helps you to write this as three over one, go ahead and do that to do your multiply. So we'll get y minus one is equal to three halves times x. And multiplying the fractions, the tops multiply. So three times three will give us nine and two times one will give us two on the bottom. Now we just need to get rid of this minus one that's with y. So we'll go ahead and add one. But now I'm adding it to a fraction, right? So if I think of one as one over one, what I'll really need to do to add it to nine over two is I'll need to get a common denominator. So I'll need to turn this one in the bottom into a two. So I'll multiply by two and whatever I do to the bottom, of course I have to do to the top. And now we'll have a common denominator, right? Let's go ahead and write that over here. So that'll give us y is equal to three halves x plus nine over two. And then we'll have plus two over two. Now we just need to combine the 9 halves and 2 halves. Remember we'll add the tops and keep the bottom. So that'll give us y equals 3 halves x. And then 9 plus 2 will give us 11 on top. So we'll get 11 halves for our y-intercept for this one. So it has the same slope as this 3x minus 2y equals 6. That has a slope of 3 halves. But we have a different y-intercept than that one does. That one has a y-intercept of negative 3. Let's move on to the idea of perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines will cross at a 90 degree angle. So I've got a couple of examples here. You notice this one here, I've got a 90 degree angle here. We've got 90 degree angles here as well. Let's look at this one on the left actually. And if you notice here, I've got a line that has a, it's going up to the right. So it has a positive slope, but it's not going up very fast, right? So it's not very steep. So we have a positive slope, but it's not a very big positive slope. So look at the way the perpendicular line is sloping here. First of all, as we travel to the right, it's going down. So that means this one has a negative slope and it's not very flat. This one's kind of flat, not very steep. This one's very steep, right? We're going down as we go to the right very quickly. So the amount of slope is not the same and the sign of the slope is different. It turns out for perpendicular lines, the perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. So just as a for instance, let's say, let's say that this line had slope of positive one fourth. Then this other one here would have an opposite sign of slope. So it would have negative and it would have the reciprocal of this other slope. So it would be instead of one over four it would be four over one. And of course we would just call negative four over one, negative four. Okay, so we have two things that we need to change when determining a perpendicular slope. We need to change the sign and we also need to take the reciprocal of the original slope. Let's look at a couple of examples. So we want to find the equation of the line through 4 comma 1 and we want it to be perpendicular to y equals 1 fifth x plus 2. So if we look at this line y equals 1 fifth x plus 2 we can see that the slope of this line is 1 fifth, positive 1 fifth. So if we were going to figure out what is a perpendicular slope, so what is a perpendicular slope? So remember for a perpendicular slope we need to change two things. We'll need to change this to a negative and we'll also need to take the reciprocal. So the perpendicular slope is going to be negative 5 over 1, also known as negative 5. So this is the actual slope that we're going to use in our point slope equation. So we're going to use negative 5 instead of positive 1 fifth. We'll use an x1 of 4 and a y1 of 1 because that's what we want to go through. So we'll go ahead and say y minus y1 will be y minus 1 equals m. Now we want to use our perpendicular slope. Don't accidentally use the original slope. So negative 5 times the quantity x minus x1, which would be x minus 4 in this case. We'll go ahead and distribute our negative 5. So we have y minus 1 is equal to negative 5x. And negative times negative is positive. 5 times 4 is 20. Now we just need to get rid of our subtract 1. So we'll go ahead and add 1 to both sides. And we'll get y is equal to negative 5x plus 21. So we have, you can see a slope of negative 5 there and our y-intercept for this line is positive 21. 
Let's look at another one. We want to find the equation of the line through 2 comma negative 6, and we want the line to be perpendicular to 4x plus 3y equals 24. Now we need to find the slope of this line and then use the perpendicular slope. Notice this is not in slope intercept form like the last one was. We have 4x plus 3y equals 24. So let's go ahead and solve this for y. Let's go ahead and get it in y equals mx plus b form. And once we have that, it'll be easier to see our slope and then we'll find the perpendicular slope. All right, so let's do that. 4x plus 3y is equal to 24. If I want to solve for y, I'll need to get rid of my x term on the left by subtracting 4x. So we'll do that to both sides. That will give us then that 3y is equal to negative 4x plus 24. We'll go ahead and divide by 3 get y completely alone on the left side. So y is going to equal negative 4 thirds x, and then 24 divided by 3 will give us positive 8 for the y-intercept. But now remember what we care about. We're only using this line, this equation, to find something perpendicular to it, right? So here, the m for this one is negative 4 thirds. So then what is the perpendicular slope going to be? Well, that's going to be opposite sign would be positive, and then reciprocal is going to give us 3 on top and 4 on the bottom. So we're actually going to use a slope of positive 3 fourths, not a slope of negative 4 thirds. All right, let's use that information with our x1, y1. Our x1 here is 2. Our y1 is negative 6. We'll plug all of that into our point slope equation and do it. So y minus y1 will be y minus negative 6 equal to m, which is 3 fourths, times x minus x1, so x minus 2. Let's go ahead and change this to plus, so we'll get y plus 6 equal to, now we'll distribute our 3 fourths as well, so we'll get 3 fourths x. And if it helps you to see how to multiply the 3 fourths times the 2, go ahead and write the 2 as 2 over 1. And remember, we multiply the top, so 3 times 2, we'll get minus 6. 4 times 1 on the bottom, that'll give us 4. And I think what I'll do, I'll go ahead and reduce my 6 over 4 before I take the next step. So let's say y plus 6 is equal to 3 fourths x minus, if I divide both by 2, we'll get 3 halves. And now what we need to do is subtract the 6, right? So I need to subtract 6. Over here, I'll need to subtract it from 3 halves. Think of that as 6 over 1, we're subtracting. But now I have a denominator of 2, so I need to go ahead and get a common denominator, multiply the top and bottom by 2 there. And then I can do the subtract that I need. So let's go ahead and do that over here. So that will give us y is equal to 3 fourths x minus 3 halves minus 6 times 2 would be 12 halves for this one. And now we have a common denominator. Let's go ahead and do the subtract on the top. So we have negative 3 minus 12 on the top. So we'll have y equals 3 fourths x. Negative 3 minus 12 would be negative 15. And we'll keep the denominator 2. So we get a slope of 3 fourths x like we planned. But our y-intercept here is actually negative 15 over 2. All right, everyone, hopefully this helps you with your parallel and perpendicular line problems. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.